Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's lecture videos. Uh, we are going to be talking about open science today. Um, open science is a topic that I've become really interested in over the past couple of years, um, especially this last semester as I've been taking a graduate seminar all about open science. Um, so I'm really excited uh, to be able to share open science with all of you this week. Um, before we get started, I am going to apologize for the background noise that's happening. They are literally doing construction on my building, like right outside my window, um, and it's been going on forever. So this is just what we have to deal with. Um, so another win for 2020. All right, so let's get started with open science. So as an example, you may know about power posing, right? It's the idea that if you stand in this powerful position, you can actually feel more powerful, feel more confident, just because you're standing in a slightly different way. Um, this idea was made mainstream by Dr. Amy Cuddy. Uh, you may have seen her TED talk about it. She's made this basically her entire career out of this idea of power posing. She has book deals and speaking gigs, um, all about power posing. Uh, it's, it's a really um, popular idea in popular culture. It's kind of like trickled its way down into the public consciousness. And we've just kind of all accept that power posing is this thing that we could do to make ourselves feel more confident. But the findings about power posing don't fully replicate. Um, so is power posing actually a real phenomenon? We're going to be coming back to this example of throughout the lecture, um, but just keep in mind that this is something that is out there in the world that people accept is true, but is maybe not necessarily verifiable. All right, so let's start off with the basics. Um, what is open science? It's probably a new topic for a lot of you, so let's break it down, right? So open science is a recent push uh, in psychology, but also other, other scientific fields as well. We just see it a lot in psychology, and that's most relevant to us as psychology students too. Um, it's a set of guidelines and principles for researchers to follow as they conduct their studies. Um, Open science really emphasizes transparency, credibility, reproducibility, and accessibility of scientific work. One of the features of open science is that it allows the correction of past errors, whether that's in findings across multiple studies or errors that were made in a single study, such as doing the statistics slightly incorrectly. But overall, the idea of open science is to raise the bar of scientific rigor. So basically, scientists are trying to do better science. So one of the main components of open science is this idea of transparency. And it's transparency for the public, but also transparency for other researchers. So why do we care about trans being transparent for the public? Well, first of all, um, the public through taxes funds a lot of scientific research. Um, you may have professors who get grants from the government, um, which is paid for through tax dollars. So it's kind of an ethical issue that if the public is paying for the research that's being done, they should be able to know what the outcome of that research is. There's also a level of just trust, right? We want the public to be able to trust the results that we put out, the, the findings that we tell them are true. Um, because, well, we see it a lot right now, you know, with um, COVID-19, um, there are some people out there who don't trust the scientific findings um, because there's just like a, a distrust, rather, um, between the public and scientists. So being more transparent about what's being done um, is a key element of being able to communicate with the public. There's also the question of access, um, and this is for the public and as well as other researchers, is just being able to access the results of particular studies. Um, so like I said before, the public is paying for this research, they should be able to know what the research is. 
Um, as far as other researchers go, um, libraries actually pay for access to scientific articles. Um, they pay for journal subscriptions, and those can cost tens of thousands of dollars, um, which can be a huge barrier for um, universities or colleges that maybe don't have as high funding rates, um, or just individuals who want to be able to access um, just one article, um, but they don't have the money to pay for a single article. Um, I posted a video on the Moodle page um, about open access, particularly, particularly in relation um, to article access. So I would definitely go and check that out if you're interested in learning more. And also, as far as transparency goes for other researchers, um, we want others to be able to ensure that our reports that we make, that the studies that we do, are accurate and honest. Um, so we'll be covering that particular point quite in depth um, throughout the, the videos here. So you may be asking yourself, well, okay, why do we need open science? This all sounds pretty standard, um, and I thought already, like, people were doing these things. Um, well, maybe not so much, um, but one of the main reasons that we need open science is that researchers are human and humans make mistakes. Um, so open science can help catch mistakes that are made by researchers and correct them over time. We also see that there are lots of different choices that researchers can make that can affect the results of a study. So over the course of the semester, you've been designing your own research studies and you've had to make a lot of choices along the way. But what if you made slightly different choices? Would the outcomes of your study be the same? We don't know. Um, so open science encourages researchers to make decisions ahead of time. So when they come to a point where something maybe doesn't go quite as expected, they already know what they're going to do. Open science can also tell others exactly what was done, what steps the researchers took in order to get to the final results. And then lastly, um, we have the combination of results. So we, we've talked about before that combining results from different studies, doing replications can help reveal the truth about how the world is. Often a single study is just not quite enough um, and using open science makes it easier to combine those results from studies. So there are a lot of different components of open science that we're going to be talking about today and even more that I'm not even touching upon. Um, but I want you to think of open science kind of as a buffet. Uh, you don't need to like fill up your plate, take parts from every single thing we're going to be talking about today. Um, maybe you're not that hungry. Maybe you only want to take like one or two things, try them out, see how you like them, and then maybe next time you go up to the buffet, you can start adding a little bit more to your plate. So baby steps, really. Um, so these are the topics that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about um, replications. We're going to talk about different types of open science publications, such as pre-registration and registered reports. And we'll talk about sharing materials such as data um, and analysis code and improving data visualizations. Uh, we'll talk about collaborations, large-scale collaborations that are occurring across the globe, and then also self-correction um, in terms of uh, retracting results or issuing corrections on mistakes. All right, so tune in for the next video where we're going to be heading into replicability.